Stay tuned for Erica Detectives. Welcome to a special episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and our series continues with our rare and unusual air guns. What we have today is a Umarex throttle. They produce this for a very short period of time, and I'll get into the specifics with you here in a minute. But before we get started here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. It doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel. Also, check out my website www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got various t-shirts, I've got hats, I've got my generation two bipods, and occasionally some inventory. And who knows, this might show up on there as well. But anyway, let's get back to our Umarex throttle here. Yeah, this qualifies because they no longer produce this. And it is kind of rare because this is one of the guns that they first introduced their stop shock anti-recoil system. And we'll talk a little bit about this. But what this is, it's a 22 caliber brake barrel air rifle obviously and it has their reaxis gas piston and the thing they set up with the reaxis gas piston is normally the bulk of the pistons in the back and then you have the shaft that comes up front blah 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 anyway they flipped this they flipped it backwards so then you have the stop shock system which actually if you can see this you can see how this free floats in here and they made the uh, they also made the octanes like this too the Octane Elite had the same thing. See the free form? That's helped to absorb some of the energy and some of the force, which is good because it could help save your scope. So it could save some scope with that extra energy transfer, which is good. Anyway, the rifle itself is about seven and a half pounds. Very solid um, synthetic stock. It's not hollow sounding. It's, very, it, it's a good stock. It actually is. And it's got a nice rubber recoil pad on it. It's got a 15 inch barrel and it features their suppressor system here, their silenced air suppressor system. This is a five chamber a noise dampener and it actually it works pretty good. It really does. The rifle also figures the five pound trigger. I'll get into specifics in this at the end. So a little heavy on the trigger, a little five pound, but they claim this gun will shoot right around the 800 feet per second area, but we're going to test that. But overall, nice looking gun. It really is. It's got the, the same, this is, by the way, the trigger group on this is the same as the Octane. It's just the same as the Octane. It's got your little safety under here, right here. So, but let's go out like anything else and test it. And by the way, if I throw a scope on here and I'm really not talking about it, it's because A, they don't make it anymore or I'm not overly impressed with it. So those are the two reasons. Just the scopes that, I, that I'm impressed with, I'm going to talk to you about them. So I'm not volunteering information just because they're okay scope, okay? Anyway, let's move on, test the rifle, come back and talk about it. Let's test out our throttle here for some velocity. Um, what we're going to do is initially I'm going to show you how it works with a 13 grain pellet, these Barracuda greens. Uh, they perform actually pretty well. They're a lead free pellet. I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to show you how it works with a, uh, uh, the velocity and the foot pounds of energy in a, with a lead pellet that actually works well in this. So let's just do five shots, average it out. God, this thing is easy to cock. It is so easy to cock. I mean, tell you, the cocking effort is under 30 pounds. I can tell you that much. All right, shot number one. 776. Shot number two. 794. Shot number three, 771. Shot number four, that was an error. It's all right, do that again. Seven eighty two. And one more. Seven seventy nine. Okay, that's how it did with the uh, Barracuda grain. And now we bumped up a little bit. You went to a fourteen grain pellet, 
and these averaged about 750 feet per second and we got close to uh, 18 foot pounds of energy and these were just the super hollow points so anyway there's your performance on the uh, throttle I tell you that is one quiet rifle it really is okay let's move on to the next segment okay now time for the accuracy test for the throttle here uh, not overly pellet picky, but one of the pellets seemed to perform a little better than others, and that's the Barracuda Green, the 12.96 grain. He's actually did quite well on this gun. So we're going to go ahead and shoot five shots, and we're going to see how well it groups. We're going to shoot, once again, our four-inch splatter burst targets. They come in this convenient roll. I love the impact points. I'll leave you guys a link below for that. We're at usual break barrel distance. We're uh, exactly 20 yards. Go ahead and take a quick look. Okay, now we're going to shoot our five shots. We're going to see how we make out here. Alrighty. One thing about this rifle, extremely easy to cock. It's like, I'm going to say 30 pound cocking ever at the most. Oh, let's see how we do here. Alrighty. That's one. The cocking effort is nothing on this, I'm telling you. And two. Okay. And number three. And number four. And one more, finish it off with number five. I'm not saying anything until I'm done shooting here. All right, and we got our last shot. Here we go. You know, with the exception of the one to the left, the rest of them pretty much stayed together, pretty much one ragged hole. So had one little flyer, or it was me, error, that went off to the left. But other than that, good groove. Okay, let's move on to the next segment. Let's test out the trigger on the throttle real quick. Uh, full disclosure, I've had this gun for a few years and I did do some trigger modifications on it. So the trigger has been modified, but I'm going to show you what it breaks at anyway. So we've got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's reset it, see what we have. Okay, one pound, nine ounces. That's one pound, nine ounces. Yeah, terrific trigger on this thing. And this thing is so quiet, it really is. It's actually a pretty cool rifle. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Okay, as you guys know, my favorite part of any review video is doing the plinking because we can actually shoot some stuff, which is cool, not just paper targets. So what we're gonna shoot today is the Barracuda Greens, same pellets we did in the accuracy test. They work well in this rifle. Not overly pellet pick, they, there's a few pellets that work with this, but the greens seem to do a good job. So anyway, we're a usual 40 yards out. Go ahead, check that out real quick. You see we've got a couple of eggs there, a can, a ram. And I got some leftover beer that nobody wants to drink anymore. I don't understand it. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use it for target practice. And we'll see how well we do. So let's, uh, let's start from the left. We'll knock down our little uh, eggs and work our way right. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. And let's go for the next egg. Oh yeah. Definitely dropped that one. And the can. So if we can punch a hole in the center of that baby. Oh yeah. And let's knock the ram down. Go for a shoulder shot. Ow! Oh, I hate when that happens. So, the pellet hits and somehow, and that's weird with a green pellet, somehow part of it fragmented, fragmented, hello, gotta come up with that word, fragmented, and uh, ruined our beer can. But you know what? I am not going to ruin this experience for you guys because I have a couple more cans of this stuff. 
So watch this. Okay, so I have a fresh can up there all by itself. So there's nothing to ruin this for us. So let's, uh, let's put this can out of its misery. Okay. Yes. Gotta love that. See, I wouldn't let you guys go without the grand finale there. We had to have that. It was just too disappointing before. Anyway, let's go ahead and wrap this up with our conclusion. We'll chat about this. So stay tuned for the next segment. That was a lot of fun, especially shooting full soda cans and beer cans is always a blast as well, literally, as you guys know. So that was cool. And I, again, I wasn't going to leave you hanging without showing you the grand finale there. Anyway, the Umarex Throttle, how'd we do? I think we did really good overall. It's, it's actually a fun gun to shoot because it's, well, we'll get into that. But let me talk about the negatives. The negative on this, just like the Octanes, was the trigger. The triggers on these things were horrific. And a few years ago, because I've had this gun for quite a few years, um, hooked up with a guy, I can't even remember his name. It was Mike or something like that, out of Arizona. And he was a machinist. And he made these duckbell pieces for the triggers here. And you could take it apart and put this duckbell in. I just took the stock one and I actually filed it and shaped it and did some things. So you saw what happened to this trigger. We dropped it all the way down to 1.9 ounces. So it went from a heavy five pound trigger to a 1.9 ounce trigger. And the trigger on this now is just, it's phenomenal. It is an absolute pleasure to shoot. So the stock triggers on these things are pretty, pretty bad. So that would be my negative. But the positives are the fact that you can do something about it. So let's talk more about the positives. Let's start with their um, suppressing system. It is really, really good. It works well. This makes this rifle really backyard friendly. The other thing I just love about it is the cocking effort. There is nothing to cock in this rifle. Again, you could just cock this all day long with no issues whatsoever. You wouldn't even break a sweat. So it's less than a 30 pound cocking effort. Um, other thing, let's talk about there, the stop shock. You know, this was a good effort. I just remember I demonstrated this, as you can see this move here. See how it moves? assembly it works a little bit I, I would say there's still a recoil but it does disperse some of the energy so most likely it will save your scope and evidently they weren't too happy about it because they quit producing this don't don't forget the uh, octane elite also had the same stock shock system and they don't make any of these guns anymore they don't make the octanes and they don't make they obviously they don't make the this model either the throttle so again, it does work a little bit and you get used to it. The key to this is shooting it with a very firm grip. You want to be a tight, a tight grip so you can allow this to move in the stock because you want that to happen. So a tight grip. Um, let's see, accuracy, decent accuracy, really was. At 20 yards we saw we got right around that half inch group. Um, did a good job of plinking. We're shooting at 40 yards. We're pretty much hitting everything we're aiming at, which is good. Now, you got to remember, this is a non-magnum, and that's why it's such an easy cocking effort. So for a non-magnum, you know, we're getting decent velocity, producing 17, 18 foot-pounds of energy. You really, you can't ask for much more than that. That's pretty standard. In fact, maybe this is, even had the edge on some of them, because you're usually around that 15, 16, we're down that 17, 18, so depending on your paper, so, or depending on your pellet, rather. So the other thing I like about it, it's not an overly heavy rifle. It's in that seven-pound range. Uh, you do have to use a scope on it because there is no open sights. But I love the uh, Picatinny rail. So they have an 11 millimeter converter to a Picatinny rail. It comes stock like that. And it's really nice because it gets the scope up at the right height. And then you can get some really good uh, scope rings on there. You know your scope's not going to go anywhere. Nothing's going to slide because this is set. This is actually a very cool rifle and it's very easy to, to shoot. It really is. So how would I rate it? Again, I'm rating this just kind of as it is with um, well, I'm going to rate it without the upgraded trigger. So I'm going to give it four stars. So coming out of the box, it was about a four star rifle. It's obviously improved since I did put that uh, custom trigger set up on there. So it's really nice. Um, overall, fun gun. Like I said, I, I'm actually a little disappointed they quit producing it because it, it is a decent performer. And uh, again, I like the stock on it too. I forgot to tell you that because it's got a nice, it's a synthetic stock, but it's heavy duty. And I like the grip on it. It's got a nice round grip here. It's very, very comfortable. Like I said, easy to shoot. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. This is our special series in which we are featuring rare and unusual air guns, and I'll do that once a month uh, throughout the year 2023. But I have so many rare and unusual guns. We might have to extend this into the following year because I'm going to run out of months, I think, before I'm going to run out of guns. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your families are doing well and getting plenty of shooting in. So take care and God bless.